Hello, hello. Welcome to a new episode of Falcons in Focus. I am Taryn Walk, joined with Tori McElhaney and new Falcons tight end, Charlie Warner. Welcome. Yay. It's good welcome, to be here. Welcome. <laughs> so you've had a day already. Mm-hmm. You just told us this was your 17th interview, and I'd like to think <laughs> we kept the best for last. Yep, that's right. Well, to, to welcome you, we do have a gift for you. Ooh. Um, so our social media, well, first off, before before we do anything, are you a Taylor Swift fan? And I hope the answer's no. 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 Gosh, is your wife? No. Dang it. Okay. Well, anywho, we're still gonna give you this gift because it's are those very friendship nice. bracelets? They are whatever? friendship yeah. bracelets. Okay. Our social media <laughs> producer Amanda is making friendship bracelets for all the free agents. Mm. So we have one for your wife. Okay. One for your son, and one for you. Where the okay. players play. Welcome yeah. home, ATL. Welcome home. Okay. Yeah. And then where the players play for your son. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. That makes so much sense. Well, thank you all. So, officially, welcome to Atlanta. But awesome. But this is not a place that is unfamiliar to you. I was going to say, yep. you say welcome, but I know, it's like, like welcome, welcome home. back. Well, well, welcome home right there. Yeah. yeah welcome home. You um, have the Georgia hat on. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm, I was raised uh, about an hour northeast of here in Raven County and then went to UGA. So, I spent my whole life in Georgia until you know I got drafted to the 49ers, but it's great to be back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you. Uh, so we'll go back because when we got the notification that hey, like we're signing Charlie Warner, um, our oh, good okay, good. can't wait to tell Amanda. Mm-hmm. So we were just kind of doing some research and everything, and a picture popped up of a sign mm-hmm. in your hometown. I know you know where this is going, but there's a sign in your hometown mm-hmm. that's kind of like, <laughs> "Welcome to like Tiger Georgia or Rabin County." Yeah. It's like. The home of Charlie Warner, and it's a picture of you. Yep, it's right outside Oinkers Barbecue, right off 441 going north before you get to Clayton. Uh, yep, big sign, welcome to Raven County, home of Charlie Warner. So, how long has that sign been there? I think four years now. I think after I got drafted, I, I think after I got drafted, it, they put it up sometime maybe in the fall or yeah. spring. So three or four years, yeah. So I, man, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten pictures, you know. <laughs> From people I barely know to people, mm-hmm. you know, they're like, man, pass your sign again, you know, like <laughs> either someone's going up to the mountains, you know, right, or going yeah. up to Cherokee or, you know, just going fishing up there. They'll send it to me. So is it kind of like weird or is it something that you I mean, I'm sure there's an appreciation for it, but also kind of just every time you go home, it's like, there's my face. <laughs> I, it's it's not weird. It's, I think it's cool, you know, that you know that my hometown loves me and they honor me like in, the, in that way. Um, I haven't got a picture in front of me yet. I haven't I really? haven't I haven't stopped. To take a picture with it yeah i need you to, to i need to get my son and hold him next to it right. he'd love that yeah. he'd look at me like a weirdo he's <laughs> like he'd look at me on the picture but i need to do that um, we're gonna have to get a second sign with you and your falcons jersey yeah well the thing is that yeah that jersey the red from the niners is a little different color right, so right. it's like a garnet almost yeah mm-hmm. i had to change that <laughs> yeah. so i'm glad that you were, were talking about your hometown because i feel like we can't talk about your story without talking about the place where you come from mm-hmm. and Tiger, Georgia is not a very big place. Mm -mm. As someone who's from a town called Chickamauga, Georgia, Mm -hmm. I understand, small town, North Georgia, we get it. Mm -hmm. Um, But for you, you also were the youngest brother of Uh, seven. Yeah, a little sister. Yeah, and then three older brothers. brothers. What was growing up like in your household with kind of that – support system with your family and having that many brothers and sisters and y'all also lived on like a ton of land too like what five and a half acres we only yeah like 10 acres but we but the best thing is we backed up to chattahoochee national forest which mm. was thirteen thousand where i was at <laughs> so it's all public land so you could just you know mom closed that door you weren't allowed back in the house you yeah. know you drink the hose water and stay outside you know so you just <laughs> took off in the woods um you know you talk about my, my brothers my sisters as well you know it wasn't a support system at first. It was oh, a. It, it was her. a. No, I couldn't compete. I just got. <laughs> I just got beat up growing up, you know. And so, I got beat up all the time growing up. And I definitely, I've always attributed so much to my toughness and um, just a lot of my work ethic. And you know, my my siblings were my heroes growing up. Yeah. You know, my older si- siblings, my brothers and sisters. So, uh, I attribute so much to them. Um, but yeah, it wasn't a support system first. It was a lot of beating up. But then as it got older, they definitely have been my biggest fans and always supported me. Y'all, you talk about being outside all the time. What was kind of the biggest trouble that y'all ever got into? Because I imagine that y'all were just out in the wilderness. You know, I can't talk about getting <laughs> in. A, I mean, we never, we were, we were good at not getting caught. I'll, tell okay. you, I'll just leave it at that. We, okay. were, we were good. Yeah. 
So we stories that your mom can't know. So she probably still don't know half of them. It's yeah. a little suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> a little suspicious of you. No, we were we were, we never did anything too bad. We were we were mostly good kids, um, but we definitely we definitely a little dumb sometimes. I don't know how one of us didn't get severely hurt or die. To be honest with you, right. we did some stupid stuff. So, yeah. And alas, here we are though. You guys all survived. Yep, <laughs> survived. You made a a comment. It was like right when you were being recruited to Georgia mm -hmm. about like when you were growing up, you like whenever someone would ask like who you looked up to, it was like it wasn't like a professional athlete or some movie star or musician or anything. It was like my brothers mm -hmm. or the answer. How did their influence shape you, not just as a young kid growing up and looking up to them, but even now in your adulthood? Yeah, I'll did some digging to find some of these interviews. Those know, are a good yeah. job. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you said it like Tiger, Georgia, small town. I thought the world fell off on that county line. You know, like we, we never left that much. You know, like if we did, we we're you know all together. You know, but. You know, I, I didn't watch a lot of TV, didn't watch, right. a, you know, so everything I knew was my family, you know, and so my older, my older three brothers specifically, you know, I just, I always followed their footsteps, you know, if they did something dumb, I'd do it, or, you know, or I'd learn to not do it, you right, know, what yeah. the result was, <laughs> um, but yeah, they were, they were always just such a, you know, just my leaders and my, um, my examples, and I looked up to them so much, and even today, you know, watching them grow, you know, you know, one's married with three kids, one's, and the other one's married. The other one actually works right here in Fire Branch. So okay. they're just, they're still my best buddies. You know, we, we talk all the time and, um, so thankful as a, as a younger brother to have great older brothers in my life. Cause a lot of, a lot of men can't say that. And I'm very thankful to have good ones. Mm -hmm. Was that part of the reason you ended up deciding to stay in state for college family? Uh, I'd say so. Yeah, I, I, when people ask me that one, actually, I try to put myself back in like seventeen-year-old Charlie's mind, and I really can't remember. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, yeah, it was like I was like looking between like Clemson and Georgia. It was like which one's closer? Clemson's right across the lake, and Georgia's right down four forty-one. It was like I can't quite remember. I definitely wanted to stay close, and uh, but then whenever I do look back on old pictures, I'm like, man, I wore a lot more Georgia gear than I thought. Like I didn't know how much Georgia gear I actually wore growing up right. until I look back at my mom's Facebook or the photo album in the back of the house. And so I, I, got, I was always a big Georgia fan, even though I can't quite remember those days. But uh, yeah, I, I definitely think family was a big reason of picking Georgia. So the now that we're kind of shifting into your college years, uh, I actually covered you with, I was with Dog Nation at the time okay, yeah. um, as like a freelance. I know you don't remember me. It's okay. I went up to Charlie yesterday and I was like, remember me? And he was like, no. <laughs> uh, well, I, it was so many people, there man. Were, you walk, like, did you I do know. those post practice interviews? Yes, like, at, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those the, all, the I, scrums. You can't ever tell who's in front of you. Just all you see is a camera lens. So, it's like sorry. also there were many a times where I just got hit in the head over a camera. Mm, like, they just whack you in the back yeah, of the head, and I'd just be like, "All right, I'll get out of here. Don't mind me." Yeah. Um, but something I remember about your recruitment, um, because I did follow it so closely at the time, was you were almost recruited to Georgia, and they were like. Maybe we'll turn him into a tight end. Like yeah. maybe that's something we'll do. It's it was almost trying to fi figure out. Like that coaching staff specifically was like, what do we do with this kid? Mm -hmm. He can do a lot of different things. He's very versatile. He's played a lot of different positions in high school. So for you in those first couple of years, what was the process to get to the point of being like full time tight end? This is your niche. This is where you can become something here yeah no you're right I mean I, I played you know from Raven County I played running back receiver mm -hmm. uh you know the wildcat formation oh, you yeah. know and then I played mostly safety on defense so I was just all across the field and um I obviously was not going to go to Georgia and play running back or <laughs> you know play safety so I remember them asking me hey do you want to play defense like DN do you, you know whatever outside linebacker or do you want to like try a tight end and I was like yeah I'll like you know I'll try tight end. I think I was like, I don't want to play defense. I remember saying that. Um, but yeah, basically when I when I got there, they kind of already slotted me into the tight end spot. Yeah. I'll be honest, probably not fast enough to be a receiver, <laughs> you know. So it was like self aware. <laughs> I'm the I'm the six five dude who's not fast enough for receiver. So and I was like. 200 pounds, mm -hmm. probably 205 back then. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, let's put weight on them, mm -hmm. and you know, try them at tight end. And so. Um, it was just a lot of big learning curve. I can really remember like my training camp freshman year, how sore my hips were from getting in a three point stance. Right, I you've never done that before. No, I've never yeah. done it. So my, I can, I, funny memory about training camp, I remember literally like a weekend, be yeah. like, 
oh my gosh, my hips like are killing me as an 18 year old. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what is wrong with me? But it was just getting used to being on three point stance and exploding off the ball right. with three point stance. So it was a big learning curve, mm-hmm. but, uh, obviously it's, it's been, it's been a fun ride and, and to learn how to do it, um, and learn how to contribute to the team as a freshman, sophomore, you know, mm-hmm. to, to learn how to do it and help the team win games was a, was a fun learning curve. Was there ever a point during that time where you look back on it and it was like, this was the moment that it clicked for me, that there is a, not just a future at this position at the college level, but even something that you could see a professional future in at the position? Ooh, man, uh, I don't know about a moment. Yeah. I, I, cause I can definitely remember as a freshman and even sophomore sometimes, uh, I still like had like a, a I, I didn't want to put my hand. I felt more comfortable standing out in the right. slot, you know, yeah. about to go run a route or even block on the perimeter. I felt more comfortable with. Right. Uh, it definitely started to turn like junior year of like, I almost liked being you know, close to the line of scrimmage with my hand in the ground more. Mm-hmm. So maybe then, but I, I never knew like I was going to have a career in the NFL. Like yeah. I didn't know, like it just, it was just a meshing of, of bringing my skill set of being a receiver and running back into learning how to be a, gritty you know run blocker to yeah. then transform it into what I you know still t- try to be you know uh, today mm-hmm. at this point now could you have ever imagined playing a different position I, I actually it? I actually can I can imagine myself playing outside linebacker in like a in a 3-4 defense yeah. where like your outside linebackers are like setting the edges mm-hmm. and pass rush and mm-hmm. I feel like I'd have been a decent one you, you know you could have done it yeah. why'd I, you turn I, defense down then I don't know because I actually love defense like I remember <laughs> being like panic decision i uh, know i remember no being like eight i was like uh georgia like all state defense player of the year my senior year and i was like but that was just playing safety so like i couldn't imagine playing like going playing you know just like i never played tight end i right. i couldn't see myself playing defensive end but i feel like i could have done it i don't know maybe maybe that's naive of me to think but i feel like i, I feel like i had the body type at least to go try it i like it now something that i loved about y'all's group at georgia specifically was there were a lot of, this is funny, but there were a lot of guys who I feel like every time I talked to one of y'all or saw one of y'all, <coughs> it was like conversations about hunting and fishing. Mm-hmm. Like that was deeply embedded yep. in y'all's like group of friends. I think about like conversations with like Jake from and mm-hmm. what were some of your favorite stories from those times with that group, like off the field? Yeah, you, you hit you hit it on the head. I thought we had a really good group of just good old boys on the team that loved yeah. to hunt and fish, and you know it was just so many of us. It was just it, it wasn't. It's not a hobby to, mm-hmm. to us, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just our way of life and our passion to, to be outdoors. To if it's springtime, you know, we're turkey hunting and bass fishing. If it's fall, you're the limited time you have, you're trying to go deer hunt or something, you know, or um, shoot some doves or something, and you know. It was just who we were, and so you know, me and Jake were roommates. Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of other guys that like to hunt and fish, and mm-hmm. so whenever we had the time, um, we were always trying to get out in the outdoors and and, and you know, wet a line or do something. So it was just such a such a release to us, um, but also just a drive to go that we you know there ain't no option to not go do it. We right. like you, you, it's like in us to bring us out in the woods to go yeah. do it. So it was just always a part of us, and we had a lot of good trips. You know, I can even like sometimes after a game we'd be like. Saturday night we drive down to wherever and then hunt Sunday morning. You know, you'd be mm-hmm. dog tired, but you right. had, you know you wanted to go do it. So um, a lot of fun memories like that. That and you know, me and Jake are still buddies today. We both live in Athens and still you know hang out all the time. So yeah. do y'all have like your favorite? You don't have to tell. You don't have to disclose this information to the public. But do y'all have? Did y'all have like a secret spot in Athens that you're like, we could go here and fish. We could go here in Hunt. Was there ever a place like that for we y'all? Had a, we had a few places, yeah, but close to Athens, it's hard to find the big properties. Right. We've, m- most, we, usually you got to drive an hour, like Greensboro, Eatonton, or, yeah. you know, a little further away. Um, but no, we definitely had some, we definitely had some great spots that we have some great memories at. Um, some that we, we still talk about today and we'll hold on to, to forever. Yeah. I want to fast forward a little more to one of the flashier parts of your career then with draft night. Mm-hmm. Because Clearly, the tight end position worked out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw a story where you missed the 49ers call. Oh, yeah. I was just. What yeah, happened that day? It was a mess. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, the COVID to like everyone, yeah. no one was doing anything. I was, I was a day three guy anyway, so I was going to be at the house. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, in Tiger, we, we're, we're off Bridge Creek. We had pretty bad, we have pretty bad service down there. And in the house, it's pretty spotty. Plus, I had, I was a che- I hadn't had any money at the time. And I didn't want to spend the full price on a phone. So I bought a used iPhone off eBay. 
way. Yeah, so I bought a used phone off eBay <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was like refurbished, which is a bunch of a bunch of crap. A phone off eBay mixed with horrible service in the sticks. Yeah. It was just like I looked down all of a sudden there's like four missed calls and like my wife was getting a call cuz I guess I guess she was on like oh an emergency gosh. I think or whatever. Oh my Lord. So I think I called back on her phone and it was like a and I don't I don't remember who it was, but they're like, "Charlie, because I, I called, I was like, hey, this is Charlie. And they're like, hey, we're trying to draft you, man. I was like, I'm right here. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, you know. And they're like, well, this is, you know, the 49ers, we're trying to draft you. I was like, awesome, you know. But it was just, it was such a crazy, like, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It was, um, yeah, it's safe to say I bought a new phone the next day at Walmart. And, you know, it was just, it was a, it was a mess. And then in the wi-fi was horrible you know trying to do an interview it was just a big mess but Honestly, it was awesome that's hilarious because i i would love because you know they always like record those phone calls for you oh know, yeah um, like the interviews after yeah fans thought i was so upset that the niners drafted me like this guy don't want to be a niner like he he looks mad they drafted him all this it was really it was just my face was frozen i couldn't hear what anyone was saying right, you're over here like you're just like uh, i'm like here. i literally walked to the bathroom when i thought the service was better and I, it just was a big mess and i was like no i'm actually i'm excited I was like so happy right, to be drafted yeah. and but everyone's like we don't want this guy you don't want to be here so it was just a funny story like no i do i just don't have any service yeah. at all yeah it's crazy that they called your wife like it's like a, in case of emergency i'm pretty sure if i can remember i think they called because I think I called back on her. I, yeah. Maybe I called back on hers, but back something. It was but just. But still, <laughs> it's like. It was just a what wild. What would have happened if yeah. like, they knew, like, never got a hold of you? I like, know. I don't know. You ha- you have, you're well, on the clock. Yeah. <laughs> like, gotta hey, get we can't of reach them. Yeah. Move to the next Move. guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's the next guy on the board? Let's get him. Oh my gosh, that's so. That'd have been bad. When you know you get the call. And, been, yeah. 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 Wouldn't have been great. When you get the call and you know you go through that process, you finally get the phone from Walmart that works. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. it all ended up upgrade. working out. Yeah. Hey, they had iPhones. Already, so. <laughs> the COVID nineteen pandemic was happening at that time, yep. mm-hmm. and that I think was a big shock to the system, obviously for everybody, but for you specifically, you picked up and moved across the country, first time living out of the state. Mm-hmm. I think yep, you ever. said first yep. time like ever, ever really ever. leaving the state. Mm-hmm. Um, for you, what was, what were those initial like first months like? You know, they were. It, to sum it up, I'll just say I, I was. It was weird for sure. Everything was shut down. Mm-hmm. But like, when I think back to that, I think of me and my wife. We just had gotten married in June, and drafted in April, married June, and then you know I went out to training camp first before she came out. But mm-hmm. once training camp's over, you have more of a life to do things. But my first memories are just me and my wife. You know, she's my best friend, and like there was nothing to do. You couldn't go out to eat, you couldn't do anything. So it was just me and Sydney, you know, my, my best friend, my wife, you know, the woman who's I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with. So we were just, we were just meshing as a married couple, you know, mm-hmm. living together for the first time and like figuring out what all that meant and how all that was gonna go away from everybody we knew. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't like a, hey, mom and dad are coming on the weekend or hey, a friend's coming over. It was just me and her for six months straight. So mm-hmm. honestly, look back on that time it's such a blessing for us too to just really grow as a married couple uh, that that rookie season. Um, it, we missed everybody, but it was really good for us to have that time, just me and her, to not to rely on anybody, to figure things out on our own. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I remember most about just picking up and moving. I'm so glad that I the Lord blessed me with a with an awesome you know uh, wife in Sydney to to do it all with. Yeah. Do you have what was something I guess that you learned about y'all as a couple during that time because like what you said like this is the only person you're around Mm -hmm. outside Mm -hmm. of the guys on the team which even at that point in time it was difficult to do to go through meetings and everything because of all the COVID protocols and you weren't technically allowed to you weren't supposed to hang out outside the right yeah Yeah. (laughs) i learned about me and sydney i I don't know if we learned like i don't know if i can think back to like what we learned it was more just yeah Yeah. it's more just just figuring out you know like things you didn't like or disliked and I can't remember if like you know I, I can remember like I remember would tell her like put the t- toothpaste thing back on like, man, she still does it today sometimes like put it back on you know but there wasn't many things that were too bad man we just we 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 really loved living together and figuring that out as a married couple yeah. and uh 
Yeah, it was just you look because you look, look back and on, on how bad that year was for a lot of people. Yeah. But we were so we had such a great year, you know, getting drafted, married, mm-hmm. living together for the first time, and figuring it all out was was so fun. Mm. It's like a makeshift honeymoon almost. It's yeah, it was you literally like <laughs> six months, five months. You know, I think she might have flown back once or something, mm-hmm. but it was like it was just us, you know. So, yeah. We were looking into the 49ers social media too, and the. Rookie hype show. I want to hear about your performance to Brooks and Dunn's mm-hmm. brand new man, new man. and wow. why you did that when there were no fans there yet. Taryn told me about this, and I said, "He did what?" <laughs> yeah, y'all, did, y'all did some digging. Good job, guys. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We'll be around all the time. <laughs> nice. No, yeah. So that was like a rookie thing you had to do. Like usually, there's like a I don't know how y'all do it here, but there's a long line of fans. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's watching practice, and uh, you got to go over there and pump the fans up. And you this know? is in training camp? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But there uh, weren't fans, right? Because it's Nobody was there. <laughs> yeah. Nobody was there, but yeah. I still had to go do it. <laughs> and I sold out, man. I, I had a brand-new man. I, I literally ran over there to nobody, did a front roll, like really hurt, actually. Like I <laughs> rolled and landed on my feet real hard, hurt my back, too. And I'm just <laughs> like, IR. I'm on my, like, you know, knees just shredding the guitar, you know, on the opening. And, uh they loved it, you know, because if you do bad, you're supposed to do it again. So I sold out for, oh, for nobody. Yeah. I sold out for my guys who were 100 yards behind me watching. So. Right, yeah. Honestly, probably for the best that no one was there, right? I'm going to try I to find a way to sneak that song into the training camp playlist. I think that yeah. I think the fans would have liked it, though. You do think so? Because usually guys go over there and just, like, you know, like this. Or something. <laughs> I, you know, I was trying to do something different. So. Yeah. Maybe they would have. Maybe they'd be like, know. this guy. Like I don't know. They're probably like... This is country music? No, I'm, right. I'm just kidding. They like country other I know. Too, I forget you're in the Bay Area at this yeah. point. <laughs> I'm guessing country music is your favorite. Mm-hmm. And getting into favorites, we have a rapid fire section toward the oh, end of man. each show. Yeah. Right. Everybody gets like the same generic five questions, right. but one we, of yours is a plot twist. Yeah. One of yours uh, we've changed a little best bit. Is that making it harder on me than anyone else? No. Oh, no. Okay. It's, it's, no I don't think it's, it's hard. hard. Okay. All right. Question number one. What was your favorite play of your career? And this could be... High school, college, pros. Whatever. Or childhood. Flag football if you want to. Favorite. Just single play. Single play of your career. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Know, That's just hard. a brutal question. That's <laughs> tough. I, I mean, I don't have a single play. If I could, I don't know, man. Uh, if, if I Recently, I would say... I, if I, my, I have trouble going back in time sometimes. Okay. Give me time. Karen I'll, does too. Right. We're, we're talking about recall. Yes. I'd say <laughs> I'd say uh, I'd say winning the idea. You know what? No, no, hold on. This is this just came okay. up. Okay. Okay. I can remember playing North Carolina in the Chick Fil A kickoff game. Yeah. In the old dome. Yep. Rookie or freshman year. I didn't do anything special that game. I can just this is you know play. I just remember I remember kind of tearing up, running out of the thing like whoa because it was all georgia fans there right. weren't hardly any north carolina fans there yeah. that's just i don't know why that just hit my head it's such a cool moment for me of like big crowd georgia fans welcome to it like mm-hmm. awesome it was so cool to hear how loud the old dome was and you know to play in front of georgia fans um that was one of the last I, that's not even a play so no, i'm sorry but, I, no, but, but that's that was a great moment that was such a cool moment for me as a young 18 year old kid who right. played you know for a decent crowd in Raymond county but yeah. to go play for that whatever how big the dome was yeah. it was awesome it's crazy too because that was i think one of the last like football I think it, games i think it was like the last, last college game, game. Right. Or they might have done a yeah. playoff game or chick-fil-a right whatever game but uh yeah and y'all it, really put it to north carolina that day i'm pretty I think sure we did yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll let you have that one. We'll consider that a play. It wasn't a play, so I'm it's sorry. It's a good moment, okay. though. I do like it. It's a good like, moment. Maybe yeah. we yeah. changed it. And I don't know. Favorite moment. Question, and like, I don't know. Moment. Yeah. And I don't know why that hit my head. It just did. No, I love that. Yeah. What about your favorite player growing up? Favorite player? Mm-hmm. Any mm-hmm. sport. Yeah. Okay. This is a good good Falcons question because <laughs> I love Tony Gonzalez and his Falcons career. Yeah. I didn't really watch him at the Chiefs when he was there. But I remember Tony Gonzalez, like those are prime, like l- l- starting to, f- when football is becoming a passion for me, like yeah. throughout middle school, high school, you know, mm-hmm. I loved when like me and my brother, you know, my brother who was a tight end, we just, I loved watching Tony Gonzalez for some reason. It's, he was so, he just caught everything. He was just, he knew how to, he played, he played the game of football he was supposed to be played. And I loved watching him play when he was at the Falcons. Yeah. yeah. I recently did an interview with him for a project that we're working on nice. in a couple months. And I had the flu. Mm. And so I was on the phone with him and I couldn't talk. And he was like, now who am I talking to? And I'm like, 
Tori McElhaney. He couldn't hear nothing, nothing, nothing you were saying. And, and I was like, let's just get into this. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, let's do that. And it was great. He you was sound great. horrible. Let's do it. Yeah, you sound <laughs> so sick. Go chug a Gatorade. Okay, if you could have a uh, superpower, what superpower would you have? Teleportation. Yeah. I yeah guess. How do you not say that one? You know, like, a lot of people, boom. Right. Time, is, time is money and time's valuable. If I could teleport home. Mm. <sighs> and avoid Atlanta traffic. Yeah, and avoid traffic everywhere, and you know, <laughs> teleport to the beach, teleport wherever you want to go. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's yeah. my answer too. Always. Yeah. It has to, if, that's, if someone doesn't say that, if they say flying, it's like there are know. there have been a lot of flying answers. But it's yeah. um, teleportation is better. Teleportation you can and flying. Fly. But there's planes. Right. No, but like super. I know. I know. Like, <laughs> but like you can't teleport Invis at all. Invisibility is like a second behind teleportation the thing is i don't know if i'd want to like know what people said about me like i'm not, not even for that just just, just, just to, to be like invisible would be cool <laughs> just you people know? watch and just like just go like this right. and just like <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh so you're doing it to punk people i don't know yeah it'd be, <laughs> yeah, it'd be fun all right uh best new dad advice that you received when your son was born oh man uh i'd say the best like like my re most recent advice sure yeah most recent you know is is when just you know today it's like signing here yesterday or whatever is just how quick the time goes and i've heard it a thousand times you know but it's it hits home when i'm like people are like oh you're gonna drive from athens every day you know over to flyer branch for practice and i'm like sound you know maybe and they're like well and a couple people have said you know get a house over there because like the time truly does fly by and, and like like time is just so valuable time's worth more than money and they're like you want to spend every you know chance you can get with your kids and so get a house over here so you can you know be done with practice at four and be home by 4 20 or whatever mm -hmm. and rather than 5 30 you know right. what i mean mm -hmm. so that one yeah that one definitely hits when you hear that from multiple people who are older than me with with multiple kids you know hey, man it goes by so quick and obviously i've heard it before but in this scenario you think oh georgia works out you can live home it's like right. nah, i might actually see my son less, less yeah. Yeah. if i live over there mm -hmm. so that's a good point yeah Good advice. Yeah. All right, and the last one. Last but not least. Yeah. This, this is, is the plot of pure curiosity. Yeah, so like what we were talking about, Tiger, Georgia is a small town. Mm -hmm. um, very, like, George, true Georgia town. Mm -hmm. If it had a brochure and it was like, things to do in Tiger, Georgia, what would be on the brochure? No, that's an easy question. Okay. It would be visit the lakes. Okay, yeah. Okay. It would go, if you're in the fall, it'd be go leaf looking, which tons of people already do. Drive <laughs> up. Looking. They All the Florida people drive up to look at the leaves. <laughs> get on the lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, tons of hiking. Mm -hmm. Go to the drive-in. Oh, there's Ooh, a drive-in. The, drive the Tiger yeah. Drive-in, which used to be like, we used to all go. Yeah. Local people. You know, we'd all hop in the van for like 10 bucks. <laughs> but now it's like a $15 a head because it's like a cool oh, niche yeah. thing to do. Um, <laughs> you got to go trout fishing. Mm. You, I mean, you can go hunting. There's a lot to do in Tiger, Honestly, Georgia. this is a, a big brochure. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, Tiger, I mean, it's it's a pretty... I think the drive-in sounds like the staple. It's more happening than it used to be. You know, <laughs> but I, it's, it's a great place to go online, and you can also find some things to do, too. So. Has the cell phone service gotten better? I don't know. Maybe it, that's prob a plus, prob uh, there's I think there's still some dead spots. Like if you're driving home, like I think it might drop a call, like in the same area as it did ten years ago. <laughs> but uh I th I think the Wi Fi's gotten a little better. I think because the lakes have gotten so much money right, on them right, that I think yeah. the the internet's gotten better. I don't know, that's on Windstream though, so that's up to them. <laughs> Well you handled our rapid questions like a pro. Yeah. yeah. And before I get into where everyone can find this podcast, I need to tell you all about our great suite that is. As the official ticket marketplace of the Falcons and the NFL, Ticketmaster has a wide selection of tickets available for every game. Whether you're cheering on the Falcons at home or away, Ticketmaster has you covered. Download the Ticketmaster app or find tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash Falcons. That's Ticketmaster.com slash Falcons. This is how you can watch Charlie on the TV. <laughs> or in person. Because tickets, person. tickets would be in person, actually. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. You did good. I can read. <laughs> good. But otherwise, this has been great. Yeah. And for those watching, be sure to check out Spotify, YouTube, Apple, and anywhere you can get a podcast, honestly. That's where we are. Nice. We love anywhere. it. Anywhere. Anywhere you can get your podcast. Apple. Yeah. Apple Podcasts and, and actually, I iTunes. Spotify. 
I think it's just Apple Pods now. Mm. Does anyone use iTunes anymore? My parents, they still buy music. Really? Oh, Good yeah. for them. For Support like I, that, that, but that helps the artists out more, though. It does. Technically. So. I think, I don't know. That's a whole sure. different conversation. Yeah. 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 Great note to end on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, yeah, Charlotte. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Go Falcons.